Hello, good morning. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Monday morning, the 10th of July 2016. Be sure to visit tradesignal.com, signals and market updates from leading providers. Uh, you can certainly download the app from the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, in terms of the markets, now, interesting. Okay, interesting. The reason why I say interesting is now we understand why the US markets rallied on Friday, okay, post NFP. NFP wasn't anything spectacular, folks. I mean, if you look at the numbers themselves, if you look at the uh, average hourly earnings, nothing spectacular. Certainly not. Uh, okay, so certainly not um, anything that would indicate a potential move higher. If I can go back now to my economic data, go back to the previous week. Let's see if it allows me to go back. Okay, go back to Friday. Let's have a look here. One second. Go to my daily. Okay, so if I go back to Friday's trading, okay, so Friday's economic data, go to the US data. Let's just uh, dissect this. Uh, you had the payrolls coming, obviously, better than expected, coming in on a, um, a 287 number, okay, as opposed to a 180 consensus. Unemployment rate certainly increased, okay, so that exactly isn't good news, okay. So first of all, the unemployment rate increased, okay. Yes, you created more jobs, but unemployment rate increased. Average hourly earnings certainly lower than expected, okay. So... I failed to see the real strength in that number, okay? Um, now, that obviously was nothing, I mean, that certainly isn't a catalyst to propel the S&P 500 uh, up to the key weekly resistance levels. Now, if I bring up the chart, the S&P 500 for you, and you can clearly see on the weekly chart here, okay, you're now touching that resistance zone at the 2135. In terms of market hours, I think the overnight high was 2139, okay? Now, you're touching that uh, key resistance zone above. OK, so from my perspective, and my understanding uh, at this current juncture is that uh, we were basically unjustified to uh, to move higher. OK, so given the fact that we're unjustified to move higher based on a um, week overall, I mean, even with oil this morning, we, uh, you, you have oil still languishing at the forty four dollar level. OK, so if the economic report was that strong, why is oil not higher? As you can see here, oil has sold off ever since. OK, the daily chart at the moment now is testing that pivot, pivot support of 44. OK, so again, and, that, and that's vulnerable because you have the uh, chart of Brent certainly breaking even lower as well. So chart of Brent, the next potential support on Brent at the moment on the daily chart. Let's just go to the daily chart here. The next potential support is seen around 44. So currently trading 46. So if the... <clears throat> Not only that, you have Brexit concerns in the background. You have political uncertainty in the U.S. with this potential racist, uh, uh, race police versus the uh, the black individuals, the black uh, black folks in the or African black Africans in uh, in America, and the racism, blatant racism there, killing of innocent civilians. Okay, and uh, the uh, the actual uh, citizens now taking the law in their own hands and and actually attempting to to murder cops, which again is unjustified. And, and, and certainly is, is, is certainly needs to be condemned as well because you can never take the law into your own hands okay so there's a lot of un social injustice there in america and again that certainly has been evident over the weekend with these potential marches uh, and so on and so forth so again certainly tensions rising there and obviously that's net, net negative for equity markets too so we've got global growth concerns we had china over the weekend uh, indicating potential weakness we've had japanese machine orders overnight certainly weaker as well China world trade lower, HSBC bearish on the UK, economy issuing a warning, Italian bank still in trouble, okay? So certainly a lot of things here to uh, to certainly be worried about, okay? And especially with regards to Brexit uncertainty, okay? And that certainly seems to have been ignored at present. So now obviously we've caught wind over the weekend that Mr. Abe has won a potential uh, battle in terms of his election campaign, certainly has a majority now and he wants to go ahead and go do additional QE. How much is that really going to affect things? I mean, let's just bring up the chart of the Nikkei. Let's bring up the chart of the Nikkei for you. Now, the Nikkei certainly has pushed higher today. The Nikkei, my chart isn't updated. We're currently trading around the 15,700 level. So we're currently trading back at this resistance zone. So, yes, we've had this oversold bounce on the back of this potential uh, for more QE, etc. Okay. And um, that in and of itself really has been factored into a large extent. You have 15.65 as a gap fill resistance as well. So how much can the U.S. markets really, or should we say the Asian markets or QE via Japan, can it really shift the uh, global market sentiment? European markets still remain weak overall. Foot seeded gap higher, certainly push back, close the gap. 
So again, it certainly is weak. Okay, so uh, uh, one reason why we've rallied on Friday is is due to front running of QE. Okay, so they were actually attempting to front run the QE via obviously the BOJ. Okay, so again, it is the the breakout or the move higher on the S and P has nothing to do with the NFP as uh, uh, per se. It's basically a front running of QE. Okay. Now, given the fact that we're front running QE and the S&P 500 now is slamming into that resistance at 21.35, uh, it's certainly that QE has baked, been baked in because the Nikkei now is actually into that resistance at 15.600 to 15.700, 15.800, and now you are looking at further weakness, okay? USDJPY hasn't been anything significant. Let's just bring up a chart, the USDJPY, and really there's been a divorce between the USDJPY and the rest of the market. I mean, if you look at the weekly chart, it's, not, it's still an inside bar. Daily chart, yes, we've had a slight little thrust higher. The bottoming tail certainly has held, but nothing significant. I mean, pivot low 100, now 101. So what, 100, 200 pip to move? And that's not really, not, not significant enough. I mean, you've certainly have massive outflows now of Japanese equities, etc. And, and and it's a policy of destroying your currency certainly has failed. QE certainly has failed. It hasn't really been successful in Europe. And it's only important when one in the one nation does it compared to the other because of the competitive advantage. Now, if anybody, everybody attempts to do QE, then it just negates the potency of that altogether, okay? Right, in terms of economic data this morning, let's have a look here, folks, okay? So economic data overnight, like I said, uh, Japanese data is certainly weaker overnight. Machine orders certainly coming in the weaker side, okay? In terms of Italian industrial output, certainly coming on the weaker side, again, minus 0.6%. So again, we will miss a Draghi's QE, certainly hasn't had any effect on, uh, on the actual uh, industrial output, okay? Uh, in terms of the rest of the day, nothing really of any major importance other than the housing stocks from Canada. And then we have labour market conditions out of the US. So other than that, nothing. Uh, Brexit certainly remains a, uh, remains a major concern and obviously the banking sector as well. Okay. In terms of uh, economics, or uh, I've uh, over, been overcome, let's look at the chart or technical uh, perspective. So daily chart of the German DAX at the moment is putting, you've put in a doji, you've certainly held that resistance zone here, you've closed the gap above. Okay, so that's good news. Okay, so uh, again, you have an unfilled gap below now, so watch out for that 60 minute chart. You can clearly see that you've put in a topping tail here at the uh, resistance zone on the German DAX now, and it's all about the gap below. Okay, so looking to potentially close that gap. Looking at your 10 minute chart, again, like I said, it's all about that potential gap below. So whether or not we can close that gap. So keep an eye on that gap. And again, you ask yourself, I mean, yes, we've had a rally from uh, 9630 up to uh, 9780. So almost 160 point rally on the German DAX. And, and really, is it, it, it is that bullish enough? I mean, is that is that basically all the QE from Japan? Is that all the uh, potential uh, bullish reaction from post NFP? It certainly isn't isn't very convincing. Let's put it that way. OK, uh, let's look, bring up the French chart, the French CAC now. The French CAC at the moment, same type of scenario, daily chart. You can see that we've uh, certainly closed this gap here. So French CAC into gap fill resistance. So French CAC remains weaker. 60 minute chart at the moment, you're into that slam into that 200 MA. You've got potential topping tail now and you're into gap fill resistance. So French CAC certainly is uh, warrants a potential shorting opportunity from my perspective out of both the indices. 10 minute chart at the moment, you have the unfilled gap below. So again, all eyes on that potential gap on the French CAC looking to uh, close. OK, so again, looking for that zone. OK, right. In terms of the FTSE 100, let's bring up the FTSE 100 now. Daily chart at the moment of the FTSE, you're currently in, approaching into that. Well, key resistance zone from my perspective was the 6650 zone. OK, 6640 zone. OK, so again, looking for that to potentially hold today. Uh, 60 minute chart again you've got potential double top you've got a topping tail so again looking for this resistance to hold at double top given the fact that oil is still languishing at 44 dollars and certainly remains weak okay so certainly take that into consideration okay 10 minute chart FTSE 100 at the moment looking for a lower high looking for a lower high and then obviously we can carve out a potential little uh, reversal here you have this left shoulder then you got the head okay look for right shoulder then obviously start to look for weakness so start to move down Potential test of 6580, then looks potential test of 655. Okay, and then that's the zone that you uh, watch out for. Okay, so that's basically what we're observing. Okay, in terms of the resistance. Okay, so uh, that certainly seems to be the case. Okay, so that's the zone that we watch out for. Okay, so again, any potential retests at 6636, 6640, that will be a shorting opportunity for me on the FTSE. Certainly looking for downside price action. Okay. 
Uh, Euro stocks, let's bring up the chart of Euro stocks for you folks. Okay, so Euro stocks. Where art thou, Euro stocks? Apologies for the amount of charts that I'm bringing up here. Okay, here we go. Okay, so Euro stocks clearly you need to gap fill resistance. You've clearly got a topping tail there, folks. Can you see that massing topping tail? Resistance being capped at 2890 uh, into that 200 MA into gap fill resistance. Daily chart of the Euro stocks at the moment. Again, looking for that topping tail. So even with all that Japanese QE and euphoria from the US and hitting that 2135 resistance, blah, 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 blah. European stocks not even impressed okay not impressed the slightest okay the slightest again banking concerns remain the dominant theme if we look at the banking sector let's look at the uh, dax german banking sector you can see that we're retesting previous support equals resistance german's banking sector certainly starting to reverse let's look at the FTSE banking sector let's see if i can find the FTSE banking sector here okay so FTSE 350 banks at the moment you certainly have a resistance you're into that horizontal resistance you're into 200 ma resistance Banking sector remains weak. Let's look at the European uh, banking sector. Let's have a look here. You're, so you stock 600 banking sector. So we'll bring up the daily chart. Okay. So again, you had a bounce, but again, you're coming into resistance. Go to the 60-minute chart, uh, and again, you're into resistance. So uh, in terms of the banking sector, you have resistance here, and you've certainly found weakness even before that. So again, banking sector remains weak. Therefore, European indices will certainly be under pressure. Okay, so I think that's a, a wrap in terms of uh, the uh, the actual European indices. Uh, be sure to visit tradesignal.com, download the latest app there, and also visit cfds.com for your trading needs, and certainly take advantage of that potential bonus offer. Goodbye now.